Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to another one of our small group Bible studies. Today we're going to continue on our study looking at the word fear. And uh, as we look at having security today in place of having fear in our lives. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to look at your word today. Pray, Lord, that you'll take this word today and apply it to each one of our lives. Help us to realize that the closer you we draw to you, Lord, the closer you will be to us. And help us realize that. And Lord, that each and every day we can walk closer to you. And Lord, we can have the security in everything that we have in you without having to fear about things that are going on in the world. So help us to look at that as we look at your word today. And let uh, pray that you'll speak to each and every one of us in the position that we're in. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Because of that Christ died for us on the cross, nothing should keep us from God and, and the work that he wants us to do. He, he will enable us to do each and everything that he wants us to do. And today, if you want to go ahead and turn to the book of Romans 8th chapter, that's the chapter we're going to be in in Romans today. It's one of the, it's one of the great chapters in the Bible. Uh, and Paul speaking uh, in this book of Romans about how the Holy Spirit <clears throat> assists each one of us as believers to bring our salvation to us to full completeness. Just being saved, just getting saved is, is, is not everything that we, we need to be. Matter of fact, God wants a lot of, out of us. He wants us to draw closer to him each and every day. Getting saved is just the start of it. And there's more to that uh, in, in our spiritual life than, than just being saved. And uh, that's just where we start. So God is sovereign. That means that he's once and totally in control and he can, he can guide it each and everything we'll do. And if we'll just let him, the problem is, is that he doesn't force himself on us. It's up to you and I each and every day, how much we allow God to, to guide our lives and what we allow him to do through us. So the, the fears that we have in our lives, a lot of times can be brought on because we don't allow God to put his, his presence in our place. Even though we're saved as Christians, and he's living inside of us. Sometimes we just refuse to let him have a, a dominant in our, dominance in our life. And so that's where some of the fears come from. But today when we look at chapter 8, and I want to start off and look at the first four verses, and then we're going to go to chap, uh, verse 26 then. But I want to look at the first four verses because it, it sets the groundwork for this, cha this chapter here and about what we're going to look at today. So in verse eight, uh, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Therefore... Is there now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus? Now, that's a great statement for you and I. It says there's no condemnation. Now, but you got to look at this and see what it says and read it and what it says and see what he means. He says to those who are in Christ Jesus. He's not talking about Christ Jesus being in us. When we accept Christ as our Savior, he comes to, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. But there's a difference between him just being in us and us being in him. And what that difference is, is that we allow him to have control over our lives and let him uh, have our, his way with us and what, we want, what he wants us to do. So it says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. In other words, the minute you accept Christ as your Savior, you're spiritually clean. But each day we go along, uh, we, we can take and allow things that Satan wants us to do and things where we step out of the will of God and we can allow those things to come into our life. And next thing you know, we're not walking close to the Lord. So he says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. You see, that's up to you and I. The Holy Spirit's there to do everything it can. The Holy Spirit is just living inside of us, wanting, wanting to conform us into His image. But it's up to you and I, and God doesn't force Himself on us. It's up to you and I what we do. So if, if we do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, you see, that's what that Spirit's there for, is to guide us and to conform us, make us look more like God's image every single day. So it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You see, being saved makes us free from that sin and death. Not that we can't sin because we do, but it makes us, the law no longer has rule over us, especially if we will allow ourselves to follow what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Verse three says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his son his own son down in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. You see, 
Christ that came and died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. We don't have to live that way anymore. Especially when we have Christ living and Christ doesn't want us to live that way anymore. So he sends his, he sent his son to die on the cross and then he sent the Holy Spirit when we accept him as our Savior inside of us to help guide us. So it says he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. And it says in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but we walk according to the Spirit. And now what that means is that Satan and the, world, and the outside world cannot condemn us if we allow the Holy Spirit to have control in our life. And because of that, when we turn that over to Him, that's when our security about no fear, about having little fear in our life comes in. Because nothing, nothing on the outside can come in and uh, can take that away from us. So we, we have that... What, what might be some fear in our lives about various things going on. And listen, there's all kind of things come up in our life that, that can cause fear in it. But if we turn it over to the Lord and allow Him to take care of it, that's where we can have that security and not worry about that fear. So if you will, now I'll take the verse 26 and we'll go through the rest of the chapter from verse 26. So it says the Spirit, in verse 26, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. That's what it's there for. It's to help make us strong in the Lord. He gives it to us. It's, it's, it's God's Spirit living inside of us. And He gives it to us to make us strong each and every day. It says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Sometimes we don't even know. But He sent, He puts that Spirit inside of us. And look what it says. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, the Spirit knows what we need. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And because He does that, because He knows us, and because if we'll just let Him have control of our lives, we can get rid of all those things in our life that cause problems between us and the Lord. Verse 27 says, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You see, it's, it's God's will that's living inside of us. And if we'll allow Him, He can lead us and will lead us in the direction that He wants us to go. And by doing that, we've got all we've got everything that we have put in God's hands. And there's no better place to be. If we allow in God to have full control over everything that we do, there's no better place for us to be as a Christian. So verse 28 says, and we all know that all things, and this is one of the most famous verses in all of the scripture, uh, Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, first of all, we need to love Him. We need to praise Him for what He did for us on the cross. We need to thank Him for Him sending the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. And it says here that if we love God to those who are called according to His purpose. Well, how do we know His purpose? That's what the Holy Spirit's there for. It will lead us into the purpose that He has for us. And He will lead us into the relationship that we need and want and should desire for Him. It will lead us into the relationship where we can have uh, the peace and everything that God can give us by knowing who He is and living for Him. Verse 29 says, For whom He foreknew, He also predestined. So He knew us from the foundations of the world, and He knew if, by us being saved that he could, he could guide us in each and everything. So it says, It predestined us to be conformed into the image of His Son. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. You see, Jesus lived on the face of the earth. He died and he was buried and he resurrected the third day. But at no time in Jesus' life while he was here on the face of the earth did he sin. And what, what the Spirit does is conf us, it conforms us into that image. And when we're into that image and we know that we have Christ living inside of us in the form of the Holy Spirit and that we have it guiding us each and every day, there's no re we have such security in that, knowing that we're in his hands. That's how blessed we are by what Christ has done for us on the cross and what He did for us by allowing the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of us. It says, For He who He foreknew, He also predestined us to be conformed unto the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, He also called. So if, if He set us apart and we, we decided that we wanted to accept Christ as our personal Savior, He says that He sets us apart, He calls us into what He wants us to do. It says, Whom He called, these He also justified. 
and whom he justified, these he also glorified. You see, when we live according to God's will, we glorify him. We're glorified by glorifying him in our, in our lives that we live. And because of that, we don't have anything to fear. Because we're standing, we're in right standing with God. So it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter. The only person we really have to fear is, is Satan himself. And listen, God's, ta God's, God's already taken care of him. When he died on the cross, Satan's uh, ending was, sa signal, uh, was signed. And so the only thing we have to worry about now is just following God's will and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Look what it says in verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, he wants to give us all the freedom that we need to be able to live for him each and every day, to be able to, to, to have that fellowship with him, to be able to walk and talk with him. He gives that all to us by us accepting Christ as our, as our personal Savior. And he did that before the foundations of the world. He knew he was going to do it. That's amazing to me. He knew he was going to send his son when he made the foundations of the world, spoke them into existence, and made man, he knew he was going to send Jesus to die on the cross for us. He knew he was going to be resurrected one day. And, and uh, then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was going to come down. And from that time on, the Holy Spirit would enter each and every one of us as Christians who accept Christ as our Savior. So it says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? In other words, who can, who can bother us? Satan can try, but he can't do anything as long as we're allowing God to lead our life. He can't do anything with us. He can't cause us to cause problems. He can't cause us to have fear. There's no way that we can go through all that when we know that we have the Lord Jesus Christ at, on our side. So it says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns us? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of, of God, who makes intercession for you and I. You see, Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father, it says here, and he's making intercession. He's helping to guide us. He said, Lord, the Holy Spirit's down there living in him and he's, and he's trying to guide us each and every day in what we need to do. And that's the way God set it up. It's so amazing. So he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That's one great thing that we can count on. Nobody, not Satan, nobody can separate us from the love that God has for us because we accepted him and from, uh, accepted him as our personal savior. So he says, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations do it? Nope. What about distress? Nope. What about persecution? No. What about famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nothing, nothing that this world can throw at us can separate us from the love of God if we've accepted him as our Savior. And I'm going to tell you what you're talking about, security. That is great security in our life to have that and know that. And then it says, for your sake we are killed all the day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. It doesn't matter what happens. We're winning. We're going to win. And one day we're going to spend eternity with him. Because of what he did for us on the cross, you and I will spend eternity with him and there's nothing anybody can do about that. Because we have that security. So he says, yet in all things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. And look what it says about who can harm us. That's the reason why we don't have to fear. Look what verse 38 and 39 has to say about who can harm us. Look what it says. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, in other words, things, uh, uh, things that Satan can dream up, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Doesn't matter what we have in our, in our world today. Doesn't matter. There's nothing that can come along after this. Absolutely nothing. And it says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing out there that you and I can face today as Christians if we allow the Lord to, to guide our lives, there's absolutely nothing out there that we can face that we should be afraid of. 
Nothing to be ashamed of. You see, we, when we allow Christ to have his reign in our life and we believe in what he says, that he's the one who's in total control, if we allow him to be that way, we don't have anything to fear. All the fears that we can drum up in our brain and, and think about and have have sometimes it causes a sleepless night and everything. If we'll just turn it over to him and let him have control of ourselves, we won't have to worry about any of them. He names everything here that could be possible to, to cause a problem. <clears throat> and the way it looks, there's absolutely nothing. Now listen, it's not all that easy. But it means it's something we have to do. He, he wants to do that. He wants to do all of these things he just said for us, but we have to allow him to do it. That's where, that's where the, we have a problem sometimes because we don't let the Lord have control of our life. We want to still control some things. We still want to have these things that we want to control and say what's going to happen. We don't want to turn everything over to him. There's a lot of people don't want to turn everything over to him because they just don't feel right in doing it. But if we do, if we allow him to have control, if we allow him into our life and let, allow him to have full control of our life, there's nothing, absolutely nothing we have to fear because he's the one's in control. He spoke the world into existence and one day we're going to be with him. We're going to spend eternity with him with no more pain, no more sorrow, no more hurting, no more things that bother us now in this life. We're not going to have to worry about it. He's the one in control and we're going to be with him for eternity. So it's an easy thing for you and I to do is just go ahead and turn it all over to him. Let him have it because we can't do anything about those things anyway. The things that we stay awake and think about at night and, and just dream up that would just cause us all kind of problems. 99% of the time, most of them we can't do anything about anyway. So turn it over to him. He can. And he can give us that peace. He can give us that spiritual strength so that you and I know that we can have peace in our life and turn everything over to God. Let's pray. Father, this is such a great promise. Chapter 8 is in Romans. It talks about exactly what we can do. Lord, and it's nothing that we have to do physically or anything. All we have to do is just let turn it over to you and let you do it. It is so simple, and yet, Lord, it's so hard. Because we're still, we've still got the old flesh living inside of us, even though the Holy Spirit's there. And Lord, that old flesh still wants to do what old Bobby wants to do. Or whoever's listening out there today who are Christians. Every one of us have that old flesh in there, and it's in there, and it's wanting to guide us in the way that it wants to go instead of us allowing Christ to have it, allowing the Holy Spirit to have full control. Lord, it's just a matter of turning it over to you. And when we do, some of the fears that we have in our life that we face today, some of the things that keep us awake at night, Lord, those things can be gone if we will just let you have it. We praise you, Lord, because that's all we've got to do. Turn our lives over and let you have control of it. And through doing that, Lord, we can have security in knowing that those fears will be gone. Because, Lord, you are greater than any fear that we have. And you can take care of it. And, Lord, I praise you for that today. I thank you again for what you did for us on the cross. I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Lord, I thank you that because you love me and won't want to guide me, and if I will allow you, you can take care of everything that goes on in my life. All the bad, I can turn it over to you, and I won't have to worry about it. I praise you today in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks. Y'all have a great day. May God bless you.